Hey guys, so today we are answering a subscriber question and the question in question was Frederick, given that there are languages like Python and Go and Java, will developers in the future have less appreciation for C and C++? So let's get into it. Well, I wouldn't, I would actually go as far as to say that we don't even have to go into the future for this one. It's kind of already happening. Let's be honest here. It's uh, at this point, I mean, there are quite a lot of um, C and C++ developers out there and they have work just as pretty much anybody else. It's actually, I mean, C++ has a lot more relevancy than, than quite a few languages, not necessarily Java and Python is still fairly relevant for quite a lot of purposes, but then Go, oh, for sure, for sure it has more relevancy. But when it comes to the question of appreciation, I think that we are already there. It's uh, at this point, the people who really, really like C++ and really want to work with it are usually either the diehard sellers, uh, like the people who are really invested in it to, to begin with, or people who are into the lower levels of programming or people who are into academics or people who just want to have that sensation of, I want the most powerful language that can do absolutely everything because there is a certain level of prestige the, at least the, that's the way it looks. Like for a lot of developers, there is a hierarchy to how cool you are as a developer. And C++ and like the lower, the lower you get, the, hard, the closer to the hardware you get, for some reason that raises your coolness factor. The closer to the UI you are, the less cool you are and the more you know, amateur programming type of thing you do, like the more off-the-shelf solutions and stuff like that. Uh, so a good ratio is to say the higher your intimate knowledge of computer science and hardware and lower level details, the higher your coolness, the more, the less you have, the less cool you are. But the thing is that the vast majority of people these days, they don't really have a good understanding of the lower level details of how a computer works. I, in a way, I think it's a little bit sad that we go, that, that go down this route. I think that it is a necessary thing that has to happen. It's, uh, it's not unlike, I mean, even the C++ developers and the people who do systems level programming today can probably admit that their knowledge today may not necessarily be on par with this sort of programming knowledge, the intimate details that you needed to know about hardware that you had, say, 20, 30 years ago, back in the days where, you know, you basically needed a PhD to even touch a computer. It's, uh, and that's kind of the trend that goes through IT. And that is that we, you know, the saying that we have, you stand on the shoulders, or we stand on the shoulders of giants. And that is exactly what's happening. Every generation adds new tooling and new abstractions on top of the pre, uh, on, you know, on the pile that comes and gets handed to them from the pre from the previous generation, right? And so we, like, iterative, in an iterative manner, we simply improve tooling and off-the-shelf solutions to the point where it's required less and less of you in terms of knowledge in order to be productive as a developer. And today we've already kind of reached that point where it is today possible to make a career without having necessarily need, any need to learn the sort of details that you would learn from C and C++. I personally think that's a bad thing because I personally think that it's, uh, it's, a very, it's very, very useful knowledge to have. I think that it gives you a more holistic understanding of computers and how all of this and memory management and how all that works. And C++, C++ specifically is in a little bit of a sweet spot position there where it's high level enough that you don't have to go all the way down to like the absolute lowest levels, but you still have the concept of memory management and buffers and pointers and all this stuff that is highly relevant for computer science pro um, purposes. It's, very, it's fairly impor important information if you want to really know how a computer works. But uh, the trend is today that more and more people don't really care about it. Uh, for better and for worse, I would say, because the unfortunate situation is that some people may feel that, hey, this should be basic knowledge, everybody should know it. And I kind of go, well, we have a problem with just getting enough people to write JavaScript right now. So I don't think there is a reason to do like considering that they don't really need to know that. And the same thing goes for Java. Like, 
it's not feasible to maintain a completely holistic understanding of something that grows in complexity over time. An example would be car and car manufacturing. Today, it's not possible to train a, mecha a mechanic to know every single piece of a car. It's not, it won't be sustainable. You need to have people who go into segments of a car, just like no one electrical engineer will know every single thing about a circuit board or, like there, or a mobile phone. Like you cannot know every single part of it uh, and to the point where you become able to produce people consistently like that. Of course, there are nerds who know and people who really, really are enthusiastic about stuff, who really go into it, but it's not sustainable for the economy to have every single person know that. Just like a doctor can't know every single field there is in medicine. There was a time when our understanding and our methods were simple enough that that was possible, but over time things evolve and things get more complicated and that's the that's this, I mean, there's no ex, um, exception to this in programming either. AI goes the same way, machine learning goes the same way. It used to be the case that you needed to know quite a lot of stuff and as time uh, progresses, we get better and better solutions. And today you can basically create your own machine learning algorithms with a few libraries and some, some basic understanding of these concepts. So what I want you to take away from this is that I think that we've already reached a point where the appreciation for these lower level languages like C and C++ have already kind of become this, you know, some people do it, but not quite a lot. Like, it used to be that everybody needed to know it. It was like basic knowledge to know this stuff in order to do programming. But today it's less like that and people have a lower appreciation for it. Uh, there are of course people who really, really emphasize it. but. It, it's a natural progression. C++ and the use case for it is it has a specific use case and as time goes on things evolve to a point where you don't necessarily need to deal with this unless you're really in a situation where you need the sort of strength that this, these languages give you, you don't really need to care about them. And I wouldn't be surprised then if we get to a point where these languages also become kind of, you know, they get their own rivals, like Rust as an example, where you d may even know, need to know less than you need to know today, but you can still perform the same sort of work. And that is evolution. Things can get more complicated over time and you require a broader and broader knowledge of something until such a point where not one person can possibly know every single thing there is to know about whatever you're building. Car manufacturing is a good example of that. Have a great day.